Welcome everyone to a new video. Yes, I do have new contacts. I'm very excited. Um, but this look is kind of wasted on this video and the reason it is wasted on this video is because we're looking at some funny stuff but like angry funny stuff. Um, I don't even know how to start this because I'm genuinely concerned some of it is genuine concern, the rest of it is just pure anger, and more of it is like dark senses of humour. Let me start with the Christian stuff. Okay, so a couple of days back I uh, was going through some videos, I've been going through a lot of Google deep dives. By the way, if you want to go on a deep dive with me, let me know, I will record a deep dive. Um, but I was going th uh, through some Christian material because I follow a lot of atheist uh, YouTubers that are not ex-Muslims and they often talk about Christian stuff and I came across like Kevin Hovind and and the other ones um, that were all talking about like faith healing and keeping the churches open and all that garbage, right, uh, during this, this season of pestilence. Um, and I was curious and I hate that I was curious about what prominent Muslim preachers thought about this and what they were saying about it. And I am grateful. I do want to give credit where credit is due. I am grateful that most of the videos that appeared like first were giving the right sort of advice. Obviously there was a lot of trust in Allah garbage, but they were saying wash your hands, avoid the masjid, self-isolate, all of that stuff, which I appreciate and I just want to th say thank you from an apostate to a Muslim preacher. Thank you for taking this virus seriously. Thank you for taking this situation seriously. And I'm, I'm just appreciative that you guys are taking it seriously. I'm just really really appreciative. However, there were some preachers that I used to listen to that we will go into in a little bit, even some moderates that I you know don't mind too much, who kind of gave advice or said some stuff about the virus that I'm just not happy about, you know. You know what? Instead of me sitting here and trying to explain this, we're just going to go ahead and react. I'm going to show you some clips that I'm going to record from my PC and you can tell me what you think. The first video um, is, is called Coronavirus Prophesied in Islam. It doesn't have many views, thankfully, but it is a little ridiculous and I would advise that anyone who is going to watch this, I'm going to, uh, I don't know if I should speed it up. Um, you should definitely speed it up because this man talks so slowly. That's right. In Akhiru Zaman, when... Akhiru uh, Zaman means uh, in the end times. Uh, the last stage of history comes. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam said it and they know it. He was, uh, it was the Ghazwa to Tabuk, the war of Tabuk. And he was sitting in a leather tent. This is a hadith of Sahih Bukhari. And uh, he said, count six things before the end of the world, the Sa'a. And amongst the six is... I don't actually know this preacher, but he did say that the source the source that he's collecting the narration from is from Sahih Bukhari, which is a collection of hadith or narrations of the Prophet. That means that this is considered authentic by most Sunni Muslims, which is the majority of Muslims. Amongst the six, he said, Thumma Mutan. And then he said, There will be a plague. There will be a plague, meaning an epidemic. And it will kill you in large numbers the way it kills sheep. This spreading of hysteria, calling this time the end times, is unhelpful. First of all, it's unhelpful. Second of all, that's a super vague prophecy. That's a super vague prophecy. And also, is this virus, coronavirus, right? Is this virus killing sheep? 
stop it. Just, just stop it. This is a theme throughout almost all of these videos. The last of which I believe uh, is just the most infuriating. Um, but the spread of hysteria is just annoying. It's really, really annoying. And I don't like that this is constantly being perpetuated and told to people. And uh, in the epidemic today, we have the coronavirus, which is just attacked China. Mm. And one of the functions of the scholars of Islam today, if you are able to read the world correctly, is to offer an insight and offer an explanation and say Allah knows best. That's right, just say it, Allah knows best. You can be right, you can be wrong, but you must at least come forward and offer an explanation, which is what I'm doing. And my Now he's going to dive into conspiracy theories, which I'm really ashamed to say is very widespread in the Muslim community. Conspiracy theories, the fuck. Conspiracy theories through the fucking roof. I... Mm, I can't. My view is that Dajjal is at work in Corona. The Dajjal is at work. The virus. The one who wants to rule the world from Jerusalem. So he has to have a Pax Judaica, which will replace Pax Americana, the way Pax Americana replaced Pax Britannica, you know, three. The so the Jews are to blame. That's what he's basically said. I don't know what this Pax nonsense he's talking about, but he said the Jal, which is the Muslim form of the Antichrist, and Jews. In order for a Pax Judaica to replace Pax Americana, in order for Israel to become the ruling state in the world, the population of Arabs, this is Muslim and Christian Arabs which surround Israel has to be substantially reduced. You cannot reduce that population substantially. They're trying to reduce the population. And I think I'm, I'm kind of sick of listening to him. You can go and look it up yourself. Conspiracy theories through the roof. Like I, and you might think, you might sit there and you might say, Faye, this is a video by some fringe YouTuber who's only got a few thousand views. You know, he hasn't, he isn't, he isn't the most known. He isn't like going out of his way and things like that. Okay, I hear you. But also it gets worse from here on out. This isn't the only one that I've found. The ones that I've found past this. Just wait. Okay, I'm going to close this because he's honestly made me angry because he's just blamed this firstly on the Antichrist, secondly on anti-Semitism, he's blamed it on the Jews, and thirdly he said that it's a biological warfare. That's what he gets into, but I, I'm sick of listening to him. Um, the coronavirus has officially been declared as a worldwide pandemic and many around the world are searching for guidance. As Muslims... Okay, so this one isn't too bad and I don't mind this one too much because I I genuinely think that he is trying to reduce the hysteria and he's advising good things so if you wanted a good example and it's got a significant amount of views as well uh, I, I don't like everything that comes out of the One Path Network or out of you know Muslim preachers mouths but um, I do appreciate that they were giving good advice. They were saying, wash your hands, stay inside, avoid the masjid, don't spread the disease, which I appreciate. And like I said, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Um, but there were other ones. <laughs> this one is by a preacher named Mufti Menk. He's, he's seen as a progressive kind of a preacher but in my opinion he's not the first thing I want to point out is he's got quite a few view views um, I'm not sure that this is his like official channel or whatever but he is quite well known he he has a huge following it's, I think on Twitter he has a much higher following um, and I would like to advise that this video was posted on the 21st of March 
and this is in a public place this is a gathering everybody else in their houses isolated and this is a gathering just wanted to point that out before we dive into the video but we'll do that now it is not a joke when Mecca and Medina have had to take such stringent measures subhanallah I've been reading very, very deeply because it's a matter that concerns us and our congregations and the Muslim Ummah and humanity at large. I like how he ordered those. <laughs> the congregation, the Muslim Ummah and the community at large. We don't want to see our loved ones struggling simply because we were foolish in the manner we gave advice. We thought we were very pious. I want to take you to an incident that occurred with me in 1996. I was in Hajj and the fire was raging in Mina. And you know, Hajj is a pilgrimage. It's a pilgrimage that Muslims perform, just for those of you who don't know. But I heard the authorities, some of the policemen and the firemen saying on their, <coughs> you know, internal walkie talkie system. On the tannoy system and whatever they had they were speaking to each other saying we have to evacuate the whole of mina within two hours because the fire is actually raging the gas canisters are exploding the wind is blowing very very hard in the wrong direction wrong meaning it's going to cause damage and so these people started with their loud hailers telling people to vacate i recall vividly something i'll never forget in my life a certain senior scholar from this part of the world was telling the brothers and sisters in the tents, my brothers, my sisters, read Ya Surah Yasin. Okay, uh, I just want to clarify a couple of things. So Mina is a location uh, within Saudi Arabia outside Mecca and people have to visit it during Hajj, during the pilgrimage. And um, Surah Yasin is a chapter within the Quran. I just wanted to clarify before we, so, so that you're still following. And nothing will happen to you. Wallahi, you don't need to move. The fire can never reach out to you, because, meaning can never reach you. Because you are hujjaj, you're making dua to Allah, you're crying to Allah, and you're reading Yasin. How can the fire get to you? Subhanallah. If you look at it from a religious perspective, that person did not really think what he was saying. Although he was a scholar, and I don't blame them on one. You don't blame them. That man who is responsible for the burnings of those people because he, he was stupid enough. He's a scholar, yes, whatever. But he was stupid enough to tell them to read a bunch of words to save themselves from a fire. You're not going to blame that man. Now, I don't, again, I'm, I'm going to cut this video short. He does go on to say that we should avoid congregations but and and self-isolate wash our hands and take the precautions advised to us because it's necessary to not spread the disease which i appreciate thank you mufti Menk. but also he's preaching to a congregation he's in a congregation talking about this it just and the fact that he, he said that there are scholars who will advise this, who will advise that you go out and you die, right? You go out and you risk your health, you risk the health of others in, in the sake, for the sake of worship. And he doesn't blame them. That bothers me deeply. It deeply bothers me. And... I'm annoyed by it all. I, I, I just, I don't like it. We currently have masses, masses of congregations happening all over the Muslim world to pray against the virus. Stop it, stop it. Just say, just, just be genuine and humble and just say, do, stay at home. Just say, worship in your homes. God won't blame you for this. Like, I don't care what you believe. At the end of the day, I do not care what you choose to choose to believe because it's not my business what you believe but also this is dangerous this is so dangerous um i'm gonna move on to a different clip now this one is called is allah punishing the world um it's got quite a significant viewership 
uh, this the, the like to dislike ratio is out of whack um, but I think this one is by Haytham al Haddad, if I'm not mistaken. This is this is Haytham al Haddad. He's a he's a preacher. I won't call him a scholar, but he is a preacher that I used to listen to quite a lot. Um, and he is slightly more fundamentalist leaning. Um, but be prepared for some more fear mongering, more hysteria, more just everyone these days. Everyone in the world is talking about what? Is talking about coronavirus. They are talking about measures to stop it, measures to protect themselves from it. Some countries banned uh, people from traveling to other countries. Many countries banned other people to come to their places. Everyone is wearing a mask. Everyone is talking about it and so on. SubhanAllah, big debate. The whole world is shocked because of this coronavirus. Now, there is something missing in all of this. What is that? Where is Allah Jalla in all of this? If Allah is real, where he is is that he caused it. Right? Also, priorities. This man is also in a gathering. Later on in the video, you'll hear somebody coughing. I don't know if it's in this video or the next one, but somebody's coughing in this video. This is a gathering. Who caused this? Who can protect ourselves from it? What is the real cure? No one is mentioning anything about Allah Jalla Because it really doesn't concern him. It really does not concern him. Allah has been out of the picture for so long. So many crises have come and gone without his intervention. Right? We don't need him and he doesn't care about us. Stop it. <laughs> and Allah Jalla is the one who created everything. Allah Jalla says, Allah Jalla Malikul Mulk, he controls everything. Allah Jalla says in the Quran, no one knows the soldiers of Allah Jalla except himself. Allah Jalla sent punishment on other people by ants, by different created... By ants? I'm unaware of that story. ...beings. This could be a punishment from Allah Jalla It could be a punishment from Allah Jalla It could be a reminder from Allah Jalla The government texted me about the coronavirus. The government of the UK, the British government is more put together than the creator of the universe. He can't just put like a uh, some writing in the sky. He can't just send a text message, call us, you know. No, he has to send a plague, right, to remind us to punish us. And also this bitch knew what we were going to be, how we were going to work out. It's not like he didn't know. He, Allah is described as all knowing. He knows everything that has happened, is happening and will happen. So you're telling me that he already planned to do this and we're supposed to feel bad for that. For him making us the way that we are, knowing that we're going to be that way and then punishing us because I, mm, mm, mm. it could be a mercy from Allah Jalla because Allah Jalla wants us to remember Him and to go back to Him. The whole debate is being secularized. There is no place for the religion of Islam in this discussion. Subhanallah, Allah Jalla mentioned few verses that will solve this debate. First of all, Allah Jalla says. So nothing happened without the will of Allah Jalla. The second question. Okay, so your answer then is that we do nothing. We just remember Allah. You you understand that this virus is hitting more than just Western countries, right? Is why is these things are happening? See, my dear respected brothers and sisters, there are calamities that befall individuals and there are calamities that befall societies. The calamities that befall societies, normally they happen because Allah 
wants those people to go back to him, to repent to him. Okay. Allah is not Allah, right? Because he doesn't exist. Allah is not just punishing people with this virus who are in Western countries. He's not just punishing disbelievers. He's not just punishing healthy people. He's not, okay, I, I need to stop doing that. He's not just punishing people who he considers sinful. He's also punishing children, the elderly, people with underlying issues that may not even understand what Allah is. You know what I'm saying? Disabled people, you know, who are more likely to die from this. I, mm, the fact that the whole theme of this is we deserve it, we brought it on ourselves, is really, 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 first of all, patronizing and second of all dangerous we don't need people to be telling us this we don't need people to be creating more hysteria than there already is we don't need that cut that shit out him that's why allah Jalla says hadn't they humble themselves before allah Jalla when they see the calamities befalling them why didn't they do that or they did or they did. Or maybe, just maybe, they don't want to be, you know, subdued into loving someone that constantly punishes them for being human, being the thing that he made them, maybe. Hello? Hello? Hearts become, became hardened and they did not repent to Allah Jalla We see everywhere, we see injustice taking place everywhere. We see injustice against our brothers and sisters in China, in India, in many, in Syria, in many other places. And the world is not doing anything regarding that, especially certain countries. You mean countries like Saudi Arabia? You mean countries like Iran? I I see you hate them al-Haddad. I fucking see you. You trying to blame this on the West without saying the West. You're just as bad as that other guy who's calling this a biological weapon to thin the herd. That exercising in more injustice against our brothers and sisters. Allah Jalla is causing this to happen so people might repent to Allah Jalla and think of him and stop these sins this is happening because of what people have earned what they have done the last thing my dear respected <coughs> brothers and sisters did you hear that did you hear that did you hear that cough if you didn't rewind it and keep listening after this Apart from putting our trust on Allah Jalla and having tawakkul on Ali we need to why are you preaching at a gathering, bro? The internet is free. You can upload shit to the internet and keep preaching for free. Why are you at a gathering? Bitch, why? To make our dhikr. Our dhikr is the real protection before we are talking about medicine. Please take your medicines. Please, I'm going to turn this off because this is enough. <laughs> Please take your damn medicines. Take your damn medicines, okay? You, remembrances and the dhikr and dhikr just means remembrances. It's like praying, but like not like the up and down stuff. Like it's not salah. It's, it's just remembrances. Just remembering that Allah has every part in your life. Um, don't replace your medicine with dhikr, please. And do not prioritize your dhikr over medicine. Because you know what dhikr isn't going to do? Is cure your fucking diseases. So stop that shit. Stop this shit. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. All right. We have two more to go. I don't know why I picked out so many, but this is from the same creator. Um, he's got significant amount of views as well. I mean, it's significant for me because I know how much a lot of these things are being shown on like TV, like they're being watched on channels. So I don't know how many people are like browsing this. 
it might just be me. It might just be a bunch of ex-Muslims trying to look for material. I don't know. But I just don't like this. This video is by Yasir Qadi. Now, Yasir Qadi, I didn't mind too much in recent years because he's... I've always thought of him as quite progressive and, and nuanced, but I really, really don't like this. Like any of this. Um, but I'm just going to let it speak for itself. We are witnessing a Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. They're fucking hysteria driving, and you know, they can say the name of the virus, but and they get ads, but uh, moi, no. Tragedy at a global scale, the likes of which we could never have imagined even a week ago, much less a month ago or a year ago. Around the globe, what we are seeing of shutting down of cities, of shutting down of masajid, of the fear, of the great trepid... Priorities! Stop complaining about the masjid! Stop complaining about congregations! Okay? I can sit here and complain as much as I want about how much I won't be able to go to Comic-Con this year, but you know what? It's not a priority. ...predation that is afflicting all of us if this is not going to cause us to stop in our tracks, if this is not going to cause us to reflect and to ponder and to think, then what is ever going to cause us to change? Dear Muslims, today's khutbah that I'm going to give, and it is a symbolic khutbah. I have never in my life given a khutbah to an audience and a masjid that is this empty. Now, knowing how progressive Yasser Qadi is because I've heard of, heard some of his things in recent years and because I am aware of him and the way that he is I had originally thought that he had recorded this in his home and he had uploaded it to the internet he is giving a khutbah a Friday sermon after Jum'ah in a masjid it's, it's so irresponsible all of these people who are giving these talks in congregations, in, in masjids where there's other people when they should be self-isolating and they should be trying to flatten that curve, it is so irresponsible and I can't believe that this is the priority. People are dying, okay, all over the world because of this virus. People are dying. And you are prioritizing masajid. You are prioritizing mosques and congregations. I've never given a khutbah to it. Like, stop it. It is a symbolic khutbah. It is being given to remind ourselves, to remind the ummah that there is a reason why this is happening. Dear Muslims, the reason this is happening is because some motherfucker ate a bat from a wet market, a contaminated bat from a wet market. It jumped from one animal to this bat to this human being and now we got a virus. That is why it is happening. There is no conspiracy. There is no... Oh my god there is there there is no underlying grand scheme issue that is causing this stop it <laughs> stop spreading this end times allah's punishing us remind yourselves of allah bullshit because that's all it fucking is bullshit we need to understand what Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran, Surah Al-Anfal, verse 53. That is because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will never take away a blessing that He has gifted to a people. Allah will never lift up a blessing that He has gifted to the people unless and until they change something in themselves. The blessing of peace. The blessing of security, the blessing of going about wherever we wanted to go, the blessing of society, all of this has been lifted up and it has been replaced with a fear, with an uncertainty. It has been replaced with death being close to us. And Allah Azza wa Jal does not change the status of a people until they change what is in themselves. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. 
But what do the elderly, some of which are have dementia, Alzheimer's, loads of underlying conditions, what do the elderly have to change? What do people with immunodeficiency, immunodeficiencies, underlying issues, immunocompromised, what do those people have to change? What did they do to bring this on us? You are making the people who are being worst affected by this are not the rich and the powerful who are apparently creating injustice or whatever the hell. The people who are being most affected by this are the poor, the destitute, the people who cannot afford medication, people who have underlying issues, people who are elderly. Those are the people who are most at risk and those are the people who are most suffering. What do they have to change? Remembrances? What is that going to do for them? Exactly. Please tell me. Enlighten us. Please tell me what that is going to do. Because... Uh, and also, let's not act like Allah is not petty, okay? Allah literally destroyed nations because they stopped worshipping him. And they were worshipping idols. The story of Noah. The flood happens because of idols. The nation of Lot or Lut, salam, whatever. I, I keep saying that. It's a, it's an impulse. I'm so sorry. Lot, his people were gay. What does God do? It fucking destroys the whole thing. Let's not act like Allah is not a petty bitch, okay? In all of his stories. In all of his stories, he literally burns people for eternity for simply denying his existence or worshipping others beside him. Please name me a more petty hoe, and I'm a petty hoe. Please tell, please name me, please tell me, please cast me a fucking bone about who is more petty than that. Like, I don't get acknowledgement, so I'm gonna roast you for eternity. Stop it. Allah does not change the status of a qawm until they have changed themselves. وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ سُوءًا فَلَا مَرَدَّ لَهُ And when Allah wills to inflict a punishment upon a people, no one can come between Allah and Allah's punishment. Please tell me what those people that I just listed, what those people did to deserve this punishment. Please tell me. Please, I would love to know. I would love to know what the what they've done to deserve this. I would love to know what the whole fucking world has done to deserve this. And they have no one to turn to for protection other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You think people aren't begging for Allah's protection in this crisis? You think that people aren't doing that? You think that's saving them? Okay, you need to get off that mimbar, okay? You need to get out of that khutbah. You need to stop delivering this. Go the fuck home, self-isolate, and take several seats. Several seats. This is so out of depth, and I am so disappointed. Nothing will protect me and you. Nothing will save me and you other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now is the time to ask ourselves, why is this happening? Why are khutbahs being given in empty massages? Priorities? Priorities! Why are masjids being shut down? Why is commerce and industry coming to an end when we thought we had reached our pinnacle, when we thought we had come to the top of civilization? In an instance, between a morning and an afternoon, everything changed upon us. It did not happen in an instant. It did not happen between a morning and an afternoon. <laughs> It's cause, it's cause of a chain reaction. Vox did a video on this. They explain it fully, how this happened, how wet markets, ro how wet markets rose from um, people starving in China and how they became a thing and how this virus came into fruition. This did not happen in an instant. It's called a chain reaction. It's called a butterfly effect. It started from one point, one man eating something that he shouldn't have. Well, you know, accidentally it was essentially just one big accident that happened after a series of poor choices it did not it stopped making this what it isn't 
It did not happen instantaneously. This epidemic did not just, oh, suddenly everyone has the disease. That's not how this happened. Stop making it like that. And Allah Azza wa Jal sent upon us a plague, a disease that no one could have predicted and no one even knows how to protect themselves against. You know what you can do to protect yourself is stay the fuck at home. Stay the fuck at home. That's what you can do to protect yourself. Self-isolate. Stop spreading the disease. Stop raising that curve. Stop draining our healthcare system. I'm so angry. I'm so enraged by the level of ignorance shown here. I think I'm going to stop with that one because that's enough of Yasser fucking Qadi. Like, there's one video which I think is the worst out of all of these. One. Okay? And y'all are going to see the title. And I just want to say, the channel that this man is speaking on is called Huda TV. It is a channel that used to air here in the UK. I don't know if it currently does anymore. And this man's name is Muhammad Salah. He's also a prominent speaker uh, in the Muslim community. Um, this one, admittedly, doesn't have a ton of views as compared to the other one, other ones. But, but this does air on television and I am sure it airs in several countries. So there isn't actually a need for it to be online. Or, or for it to get as many views online because this is being broadcasted to Islamic channels and this is an Islamic channel and I'm just gonna I'm just I'm just gonna play it okay and then we're gonna have some final comments brothers and sisters remember Aisha radiallahu anha said I once heard the messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying that plague and also the epidemic diseases are means of punishment through which Allah punishes whomever he wills of his servants. But for the believers, they are means of mercy. Then he says, if a believer happened to be infected with any of these epidemic diseases, such as plague, then he endures it patiently and he puts his trust in Allah. If he dies, he dies as a shaheed. He dies and Allah will give him the reward of a martyr. Why? As if people aren't crazy enough, why? Why would you put the merit of martyr why would you say that? I don't care what the sources say. Why would you tell people that in the middle of a global pandemic, in the middle of a global crisis? Why? I would like to reiterate that most of the content that I did find is reasonable and people are being told to stay in their homes and wash their hands and follow the guidance given out by healthcare services and governments. But some of these things that I have found are driving hysteria, driving fear, okay, in some cases in reinforcing anti-Semitism, being extremely unreasonable and coming up with conspiracy theories. And there are even preachers saying that if you get the virus and you die of it, you'll die a martyr. Stop listening to your preachers, listen to your healthcare services, listen to your governments, and follow their guidance. I am not a particularly scientific person. I don't know all of the reasons for why the government would want to keep us indoors, but it's to help flatten that curve. It is to buy us more time so that we can find a cure. And I need people to understand that these people who are talking about and prioritizing worship over the general well-being of people are insane. They are crazy. Do not listen to them. I don't know who 
is watching me say this, but it, I implore you, please just do as you are advised by officials, healthcare officials and government officials. Please. This is not a game. These people are treating it like it's a game, but this is not a game. Please prioritize your health, the health of your loved ones and the health of your community. Please prioritize humanity over your need to go to a house of God or whatever. Please. Thank you for watching this video. If you like my content, please do consider liking, sharing, subscribing, all that good stuff. Um, all of my social media links, Patreon, PayPal, all of that stuff is linked in the description below. If you would like to see more or you have suggestions, please do leave them in the comments. I will see you in the next video, hopefully tomorrow, where we will be doing, hopefully, something more fun than this. Thank you and goodbye.